Okay, want to get back to a couple of those questions? <clears throat> yeah, so uh, we have quite a, quite a few uh, here. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll start with uh, Namrata, who asked uh, if you could discuss the ADA codes pertaining to site planning um, and how you should sort of tackle studying for that. Well, so the, the big thing about um, the ADA codes in terms of site planning is going to be ramps um, because the ramps are going to be the main... Uh, when you get into the building itself, you get into all sorts of things about, uh, you know, audio and visual alarms and you get into wayfinding issues and a whole bunch of other stuff that are all ADA related. But in terms of the site, it's almost always about ramps. Key thing to remember about a ramp is, you know, everybody knows the 1 to 12, uh, that uh, 1 inch uh, vertical is 12 inches horizontal, so every inch is 1 foot horizontal. A um, couple things to remember about that is, uh, I can't go more than 30 inches vertical without having a, a place to rest. So that is something that might show up. It seems very, very, very unlikely it would show up on the vignette, um, but it could easily show up in uh, a uh, multiple choice type question. Uh, the other thing to, to make sure you have a, a good handle on is just you know beforehand, use the percentage uh, way of thinking about slope. Get used to that as a way of thinking about it because on site planning, they'll talk about uh, slope as percent, uh, whereas other places will talk about it as a ratio. Uh, so you wanna make sure that you're in that realm. If I am lower slope than one to 20, that's very, very meaningful because that means it's just slope. It no longer becomes an accessible slope. So I don't have to have railings and curbs and all of that. If I have a slope that is steeper than one to 12, well, that's fine. You can totally have a slope, a ramp that's steeper than 1 to 12. You just can't have it be an accessible ramp. Uh, so you just have to be careful about the terminology and how it gets used. You know, loading docks, for example, have slopes steeper than that all the time. Uh, so the key thing is just having a really good understanding of those issues and then uh, kind of thinking about how uh, the relationship between handicap parking and uh, a building entrance. So clearly it does not make sense to have a building entrance that's totally accessible if I have to go over a curb to get to my car. So the accessible path has to be all the way from the handicapped parking space up to the door. Uh, equally, this is um, a little harder to say specifically because it uh, gets a little complicated in terms of the use of the building and who's required to meet certain ADA uh, rules, but in general, you always try to have people uh, in wheelchairs or in other kinds of mobility issues uh, also using the same front door. You don't want to give secondary entrances. You don't want to make second-class citizens. Uh, so uh, it's the usual way of thinking about it is that the handicapped parking space is the closest to the door, but the closest to the door could mean that it's actually uh, the closest accessible route to the door, which can actually get a lot more complicated and farther away. So those are the kind of the main issues. I would just make sure you have a handle on those numbers, uh, the idea of how the ramps work in relationship uh, to front doors and the, in relationship to handicapped parking spaces. Uh, you're drawing in curbs in order to control water often in parking, but you want to be very careful about uh, how those curbs relate to somebody getting in and out of their uh, car or, or an accessible van, something like that, and there's some way for them to get from that parking area into the, the main play. So that's going to be the main thing that's going to show up for ADA issues. Mm -hmm.